H.P. Lovecraft's Fungi from Yugoth. The Book The place was dark and dusty and half lost, in tangles of old alleys near the quays, reeking of strange things brought in from the seas, and with queer curls of fog that west winds tossed. Pursuit I held the book beneath my coat, at pains to hide the thing from sight in such a place hurrying through the ancient harbor lanes with often turning head and nervous pace. The Key I do not know what windings in the waste of those strange sea lanes brought me home once more, but on my porch I trembled, white with haste, to get inside and bolt the heavy door. Recognition The day had come again when, as a child, I saw just once that hollow of old oaks, gray with a ground mist that enfolds and chokes the slinking shapes which madness has defiled. Homecoming The demon said that he would take me home to the pale, shadowy land I half recalled as a high place of stair and terrace walled with marble balustrades that sky winds comb. The Lamp We found the lamp inside those hollow cliffs whose chiseled sign no priest in Thebes could read and from whose caverns frightened hieroglyphs warned every creature of Earth's breed. Zaman's Hill The great hill hung close over the old town, a precipice against the main street's end, green, tall, and wooded, looking darkly down upon the steeple at the highway bend. The Port Ten miles from Arkham, I had struck the trail that rides the cliff edge over Boynton Beach and hoped that just at sunset I could reach the crest that looks on Innsmouth in the Vale. The Courtyard It was the city I had known before, the ancient leprous town where mongrel throngs chant to strange gods and beat unhallowed gongs in crypts beneath foul alleys near the shore. The Pigeon Flyers They took me slumming where gaunt walls of brick bulge outward with a viscous stored up evil and twisted faces thronging foul and thick wink messages to alien god and devil. The Well Farmer Seth Atwood was past 80 when he tried to sink that deep well by his door, with only ebb to help him bore and bore. We laughed and hoped he'd soon be sane again. The Howler they told me not to take the Briggs Hill path that used to be the high road through to Zor. For Goody Watkins, hanged in 1704, had left a certain monstrous aftermath. Hesperia. The winter sunset, flaming beyond spires and chimneys half detached from this dull sphere, opens great gates to some forgotten year of elder splendors and divine desires. Star Winds 
It is a certain hour of twilight glooms, mostly in autumn, when the star wind pours down hilltop streets, deserted out of doors, but showing early lamplight from snug rooms. Antarctus. Deep in my dream, the great bird whispered queerly of the black cone amid the polar waste, pushing above the ice sheet lone and drearily by storm-crazed eons battered and defaced. The Window The house was old, with tangled wings outthrown, of which no one could ever half keep track, and in a small room somewhat near the back was an odd window sealed with ancient stone. A Memory There were great steps and rocky tablelands, stretching half limitless in starlit night, with alien campfires shedding feeble light on beasts with tinkling bells in shaggy bands. The Gardens of Yin Beyond that wall, whose ancient masonry reached almost to the sky and moss-thick towers, there would be terraced gardens rich with flowers and flutter of bird and butterfly and bee. The Bells Year after year I heard that faint, far ringing of deep-toned bells on the black midnight wind. Peals from no steeple I could ever find, but strange, as if across some great void winging. Night Gaunts Out of what crypt they crawl, I cannot tell. But every night I see the rubbery things, black, horned, and slender, with membranous wings, and tails that bear the bifid barb of hell. Nyarlathotep. And at the last, from inner Egypt came the strange dark one to whom the Phelis bowed, silent and lean and cryptically proud, and wrapped in fabrics red as sunset flame. Azathoth. Out in the mindless void, the demon bore me, past the bright clusters of dimension space, till neither time nor matter stretched before me, but only chaos without form or place. Mirage. I do not know if ever it existed, that lost world floating dimly on time's stream, and yet I see it often, violet misted, and shimmering at the back of some vague dream. The Canal Somewhere in dream, there is an evil place, where tall, deserted buildings crowd along, a deep, black, narrow channel reeking strong of frightful things whence oily currents race. St. Toad's Beware, St. Toad's crack chimes! I heard him scream as I plunged into those mad lanes that wind in labyrinths obscure and undefined south of the river where old centuries dream. The Familiars John Waitley lived about a mile from town, up where the hills begin to huddle thick. We never thought his wits were very quick, seeing the way he let his farm run down. The Elder Pharos From Lang, where rocky peaks climb bleak and bare, 
Under cold stars obscure to human sight, there shoots at dusk a single beam of light, whose far blue rays make shepherds whine in prayer. Expectancy I cannot tell why some things hold for me a sense of unplumbed marvels to befall, or of a rift in the horizon's wall, opening to worlds where only gods can be. Nostalgia Once every year, in autumn's wistful glow, the birds fly out over an ocean waste, calling and chattering in a joyous haste to reach some land their inner memories know. Background I never can be tied to raw, new things, for I first saw the light in an old town, where from my window huddled roofs sloped down to a quaint harbor rich with visionings. The Dweller It had been old when Babylon was new. None knows how long it slept beneath that mound, where in the end our questing shovels found its granite blocks and brought it back to view. Alienation His solid flesh had never been away, for each dawn found him in his usual place, but every night his spirit loved to race through gulfs and worlds remote from common day. Harbor Whistles Over old roofs and past decaying spires, the harbor whistles chant all through the night, throats from strange ports and beaches far and white and fabulous oceans ranged in motley choirs. Recapture The way led down a dark, half-wooded heath where moss-gray boulders humped above the mold and curious drops, disquieting and cold, sprayed up from unseen streams in gulfs beneath. The Evening Star I saw it from that hidden, silent place where the old wood half shuts the meadow in. It shone through all the sunset's glories, thin at first, but with a slowly brightening face. Continuity. There is in certain ancient things a trace of some dim essence, more than form or weight, a tenuous ether indeterminate yet linked with all the laws of time and space. Despair O'er the midnight moorlands crying, through the cypress forests sighing, in the night wind madly flying, hellish forms with streaming hair, in the barren branches creaking, by the stagnant swamp pools speaking, past the shore cliffs ever shrieking, damned demons of despair. Festival. There is snow on the ground, and the valleys are cold, and a midnight profound blackly squats o'er the wold, but a light on the hilltops half seen hints of feastings unhallowed and old. Halloween in a Suburb The steeples are white in the wild moonlight, and the trees have a silver glare Past the chimneys high, see the vampires fly, and the harpies of upper air that flutter and laugh and stare. For the village dead to the moon outspread, 
never shone in the sunset's gleam, but grew out of the deep that the dead years keep, where the rivers of madness stream, down the gulfs to a pit of dream. In a sequestered Providence churchyard where once Poe walked, Eternal brood the shadows on this ground, dreaming of centuries that have gone before. Great elms rise solemnly by slab and mound, arched high above a hidden world of yore. Round all the scene a light of memory plays, and dead leaves whisper of departed days, longing for sights and sounds that are no more. Nemesis Through the ghoul-guarded gateways of slumber, past the wan-mooned abysses of night, I have lived o'er my lives without number. I have sounded all themes with my sight, and I struggle and shriek ere the daybreak, being driven to madness with fright. I have whirled with the earth at the dawning, when the sky was a vaporous flame. I have seen the dark universe yawning, where the black planets roll without aim, where they roll in their horror unheeded, without knowledge or luster or name. On reading Lord Dunsany's Book of Wonder The hours of night unheeded fly, and in the great the embers fade. Vast shadows one by one pass by in silent demon cavalcade. The Ancient Track There was no hand to hold me back. That night I found the ancient track. Over the hill, and strained to see, the fields that teased my memory. This tree, that wall, I knew them well. And all the roofs and orchards fell familiarly upon my mind, as from a past not far behind. The Messenger To Bertrand K. Hart, Esquire The thing, he said, would come that night at three from the old churchyard on the hill below. But crouching by an oak fire's wholesome glow, I tried to tell myself it could not be. Surely, I mused, it was a pleasantry, devised by one who did not truly know the elder sign, bequeathed from long ago, that sets the fumbling forms of darkness free. The Outpost When evening cools the yellow stream And shadows stalk the jungle's ways Zimbabwe's palace flares ablaze For a great king who fears to dream For he alone of all mankind Waded the swamp that serpents shun And struggling toward the setting sun came on the veldt that lies behind. To a dreamer I scan thy features, calm and white, beneath the single taper's light, thy dark fringed lids, behind whose screen are eyes that view not earth's demean. And as I look, I fain would know 
the paths whereon thy dream steps go, the spectral realms that thou canst see with eyes veiled from the world and me. To Clark Ashton Smith, Esquire, upon his fantastic tales, verses, pictures, and sculptures. A time black tower against dim banks of cloud, around its base the pathless, pressing wood. Shadow and silence, moss and mold, enshroud gray, age-felled slabs that once as Cromlech stood. No fall of foot, no song of bird awakes the lethal aisles of sempiternal night, though oft with stir of wings the dense air shakes, as in the tower there glows a pallid light. To Mr. Fenley, upon his drawing for Mr. Block's tale, The Faceless God. In dim abysses pulse the shapes of night, hungry and hideous, with strange miters crowned, black pinions beating in fantastic flight, from orb to orb through sunless void profound. None dares to name the cosmos whence they course, or guess the look on each amorphous face, or speak the words that with resistless force would draw them from the hells of outer space. We hope you've enjoyed this Fadogan and Bremer production of H.P. Lovecraft's Fungi from Yugoth. Read by William Hart. Original score by Graham Plowman.